Hello and welcome again to another screencast edition of Autodesk Maya. This is part two of the um, low poly character tutorial. Uh, part one, we focused on establishing a project window and a new project folder when creating a low poly character. We also established in creating a reference photo within our quad orthogonal view. Um, so, as I stated before, we are going to use a polygon primitive a cube to create a humanoid character. Now, how is this possible? Easy. All you have to do is create subdivisions using the edge loop tool. Then proceed forward to use the sculpting tools and extrusions. Uh, so I'm going to show you the first part in creating and setting up the foundation, which is the face. So, okay. Starting off, I'm going to select my cube right here. Be sure to name your stuff, as I stated before. Let's see. Dwarf. There. So, again, please, not extrude, sorry. Um, please scale this out just enough to fit within the face of the front view and also the side view. So that means any of the corners that touch within the supposed imaginary line of the character and it should be fitted. Now, as I stated before, the easiest way to approach this is to use the edge loop tool. So make sure you select your object, go to mesh tools, and go to insert edge loop. So once you have that, you're going to insert uh, an edge loop onto the center uh, vertical and horizontal center into the front view. So you should have like a cross uh, um, crossing paths in each, in each other. Once you have that, go to your side view, add three divisions, subdivisions. So one to the center, two to its furthest right, and three for the furthest left. So I know you have an odd amount of subdivisions here, and I know you might think uh, it'd be a little bit easier to create a polygon primitive cube um, with the subdivisions that is provided here, but you may also run the risk of um, going over the amount of polys that you have. Again, as I stated before from the class assignment, um, the required minimum for this is to at least do not exceed anything over 8,500 polys. So in order to keep an eye on the amount of poly count within this uh, polygon primitive cube, there's a little nifty feature in Maya which you could use, which is called the poly count. So all you have to do is go to display, heads up display, and poly count. Now you'll see right here in the top right hand corner, uh, the numbers and a bunch of words right here taking up space. Now in order to decipher what it means, uh, here you have at least one, two, three, four, five rows, and at least one, two, three three columns with a uh, worth of numbers. So you have your vertices, your edges, faces, tries, and UVs. The ones that we're particularly focusing on is the tries. This is the amount of polys that you need to see. That's your poly count there. If you want to know how many polygons, focuses, focus on the tries right here. So First column is mostly uh, total amount of polys that are visible. Then on um, the second column is the total amount of polys that are selected. So the one that I selected right here contains only 80 polygons. So that's what we have. So now that we have that, and yeah, we've already established the setup right here, the next step is we're going to add more subdivisions. So I'm going to start off putting more right here and also another one right here onto the front view. So you should have one, two, three subdivisions. Now the next step, you're going to right click and go to vertex mode. Press W to make sure you have your uh, translation tool selected. Now what we're going to do is select our vertices from the center right here. Then press the R key for your scale, and you're going to scale it outwards from this end to that end. You're going to repeat the same process here. 
and hold shift and click and drag to select multiple um, vertices. Once you have that, you're going to scale it outwards just enough to make it into this particular shape. Now I'm going to shift select here just to squeeze in just a little bit like that. Same thing here. Depending on your character, it may not have so much definition onto your character, but since my character has a very prominent jaw, a jawline, and also a very protruding eyebrow line too. So I need to take consideration on the definition of the face that needs to be. So I'm going to make it wider right here. And his chin needs to be here, moved a little bit to here. So what I'm going to do is pull this front and center here. Move this down. Scooch this down a little bit here. I want to round this off just nicely. Not too much. Okay. So if you want to make sure everything's aligned, uh, side view. You could go back to your attribute editor. Look at your views here. Same thing here. Making sure everything's positioned correctly. Okay, oops. Once you have that, go back so everything's in line, in place. There. Anyways, so once you have that, what we could do is start fixing up a little bit of the minor details here. So I'm going to go into my back end, shift select my vertices. If you want to hide um, the manipulator tool, just press the Q key, like Q as in queen. So once you have that, go back to W for your translation tool. Pull this down to at least to make the forehead here. Pull this out in like that. Right, like this. Now, with the face, it's uh, a human face is never flat. Uh, they may have some people, uh, depending on ethnicity, may have like flat forehead or, but uh, their face is never flat. They have some definition of curvature within it. So I'm going to push back here individually to at least give a little bit of a curvature in it here. So it's a little bit of definition here and there. It's not that much, but it's something. Anyways, now I'm going to add a little bit more subdivisions within the eye line and the mouth line. So what I'm going to do, edge loop, to, edge loop tool again. One here, one here. So now, depending on the character, since mine happens to be a dwarven warrior, I might as well make a little bit more definition within the lower jawline here. So now that we have that, go back to vertices. Pull this out to make the back of the head. There. So now we established the first part of it. Now, we could individually pull the vertices, but that's going to take up so much of our time. But instead, what we're going to do is actually use the um, Sculpt Geometry tool. So go to Surfaces, Sculpt Geometry tool. And voila, it'll have your tool settings. Make sure your opacity is set to its lowest setting. Profile is in Soft Brush and make sure you have selected your parameters operations of relax or either smooth. So I'm going to start off with the relax tool here. 
you could use to increase the brush size or decrease the brush size, you have to press and hold the B key. Then proceeding to left mouse click and drag inward or outward to either increase or decrease. So once you have chosen your brush size, then you could proceed forward to sculpting it. So I'm going to sculpt this here. <clears throat> Give a little bit of definition in this area of the head. So the skull should look oval. It's not perfect. That's okay. We can easily fix this. We use the smooth tool, smooth out here. And sometimes, if necessary, you may use the pull tool to pull out some part of the vertices, but be gentle with the certain areas that you need to be. You don't want it too uh, protruding. There we go. So again, fix this up. I'm going to use the push to give definition here to make the neckline. You want to do that just enough. Ooh, here, but not too much, just like this. There. I'm going to use the pull tool to give uh, the jawline right here. There we go. It's not perfect, but we could easily refine it along the way using the vertex mode. There we go. Ta -da. And just like that, let's see. Try to make sure your uh, head is, avoid your head to look like a potato. Make sure you line it up just nicely on the front end here. So since my character's uh, forehead or skull is a little bit oblonged on the right side, so don't worry about it. You want to make it as 99.9 .9 accurate as possible. But sometimes drawings are not as accurate as usual, as it should be. But so do you know. Pull this here. That there. There. Okay, you can go back to the skull, I mean, sculpt geometry tool here. and refine some areas if you feel that it needs to be refined. Like that. So. There we go. Voila. So once you have that, everything looks pretty good. Now it's starting to take shape. So this concludes uh, part two of the screencast tutorial of Autodesk Maria. Thank you.